Hi there, I'm an Ultimate Iron Man. Sort of. I've divided the RuneScape map into 18 regions, all with their own custom-built task system. These tasks provide rewards to me, such as XP and supplies. Every week, I will randomly select one of these regions and I'll be locked to it for 9 hours. Once up, my inventory and ward equipment will be wiped. My bank will be operating on a store-only basis, which means I can never take items out of it. I have compiled a list of RuneScape bosses and the goal of this series is to kill all of them at least once. With every boss killed for the first time, I'm awarded either the choice of an additional region every week or the ability to carry over one inventory slot every single week. Lastly, all of this content will be streamed live at twitch.tv forward slash MrFrogRS, so be sure to join in. If you need any more information, make sure you check out the description, or just leave a comment. Without further ado, I bring you... Regional Rumble! But without further ado, let's go ahead and spin the three regions. Well, that is going to be interesting. Oh, God. I know I said last week I didn't know what I was going to do, but I really need to do some theory crafting for this one. Let's go week 19, I suppose. Hello and welcome to another episode of Regional Rumble. This week, uh, we have hit the dreaded region of the Wilderness. Now, I do have two other regions I can use this week, so I'm not limited to the Wilderness, but I do want to get some content done there while I have a feasible opportunity to, before I have too much stuff, basically, to risk. And uh, now's a pretty good time to do it. It's taken a while. I mean, even though I only unlocked it at week 8, it is now week 19, so I had another 11 weeks before I even got it. But anyway, uh, a few a few things that I want to mention uh, at the beginning of this. First of all, um, I originally stated, I don't know if I've stated in videos, but I've stated many times on streams, that I didn't want this series to become PvP-centric. So, first of all, uh, I, I guess I should clarify this as well, uh, PvP is not allowed. I, I can't go and kill people. Because um, I, I function as an Iron Man, so I have to keep those rules the same way. Uh, secondly, I do not want this to be PvP-centric at all. So I am going to be changing the way things work when I die to a player. Uh, dying to monsters is going to remain the same. Obviously, I have to get back, etc., etc. Uh, but we didn't want this to be fully focused on PvP. So for now, the rule I'm going to set in place is that I get to keep the three items that I uh, keep on death. Or four, I guess, if I use this. So essentially, like, normal Iron Man rules. Uh, this only applies to the Wilderness, and that's PvP deaths only, by the way. So if I go and die to Callisto or something, that doesn't count. I'd have to go back to get my stuff. Um, I may change this rule in the future. I'm always open to feedback. But I want to make it clear that I do not want this entire series to be fixated around me doing PvP and surviving PvP. That's not the point of it. The point of it is to see if I can kill the bosses with the uh, supplies in my local areas. It's nothing to do with player killing. So I just want to stress that quite harshly. Um... Another thing to mention is, uh, I might have mentioned this before as well, but there's no elite task in the wilderness. This isn't going to affect me for a very long time, but there is no elite task in the wilderness. And the reason I did this is because I felt like doing the hard tasks alone is going to be difficult as it is with uh, PKs existing. And I didn't really want to push it to be the elite one as well. So I decided not to put an elite task in the wilderness, but we do have easy, medium and hard still um, that we will be trying to get through. Um, we've got quite a few tasks that we can get done this week. I don't know how highly I'm going to prioritize them. I think my biggest goal this week is killing the crazed archaeologist. I believe that's his name. Um, I've got a few plans on how I want to do this. Don't know how well they're going to work out, but I will give them a good try. And, uh, that's probably where we're going to go from here. I have rambled on for a bit, but I guess it's about time we started this timer and took our first few steps into the wilderness. Let's get going.
So the first thing I actually want to do in this episode is grab myself this Staff of Earth, which is in the Lava Maze, up in the northern side of the wilderness. And then we're going to collect ourselves some steel plate bodies. I know the generic method to making money on an Iron Man, but it is a very good way to start making GP. And I'm going to need GP to buy runes soon. And uh, the Staff of Earth is just going to allow me to auto-cast, so it's basically just me being lazy, pretty much. But yeah, we're going to try and collect up a bunch of these. I don't know if I want a full invent or not. I will decide when it comes to it. But for now, we're going to be hopping around the worlds. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Oh yes, yeah, so there's one quick thing I want to put on while I'm here. Uh, I'm not quite sure where the setting is. Um, I believe... There we go. Oh, it's already turned on. Okay, so I put on PK Skull Prevention so I cannot get Skulled accidentally. Uh, this will prevent me from losing the three items, as I said before. And if I protect item, I keep four. I'm going to be sticking to those death mechanics for this entire episode. Like I said, I am open to changing them in the future. But I really, really, really do not want this to become a PvP-centric series. So that's the main reason why I'm doing this. And I know I've explained it a few times. I just want to make it clear. All right. So we've made our way over to the bandit camp in the wilderness. Uh, and the reason... Uh, first of all, I'm in a free-to-play world just because... Pfft, I get the lower level ones. I'm going to hop over to the base play world in a moment. Actually, I guess I don't need to, right? Because they're... Uh... Oh my god, I'm just going to kill this guy. They're free to play items, so I don't know how this works. Uh, I'll probably check out whether the prices are actually the same or not. Never really done this. But the reason I've done it with steel plates, uh, instead of steel legs, which I was originally going to do, is actually because uh, to sell a steel plate body here is uh, one of the easy tasks in the wilderness area. So I'm going to be going ahead and getting that done. Ah, some coins. I accidentally... Oh, wait, no, I didn't pick up the bones. How much is he buying for? Oh, that is high elk value. Huh. Well, I guess I don't have free to pay well then. That is going to be an easy task in the wilderness area complete. Okay, for this task, the rewards are 5,000 XP, a lobster pot, or two attack and strength potions. Now, the reason the lobster pot is on this, and I, I know I specifically put this here, is so that I would be able to train fishing beyond the small net fishing in the wilderness. Uh, but with the regions I've got, I believe I can get a lobster pot anyway. So it's not really useful to me right now. Like I said, it took me 11 weeks to actually get wilderness after unlocking it anyway. So that's a bit awkward. But um, we've also got so two attack and strength potions. But given with what we were going to do is mostly magic, I don't know if that's going to help me that much. I might have a think about what else I'm doing. Uh, or maybe I keep it for melee training if the um, the XP reward isn't great. But we will go ahead and see what we get from the XP, and we will choose. Okay, let's go ahead and spin that wheel. To be honest, it's my lowest viable skill. I. I mean, it's 5k XP. It's going to give me one level, I think, but uh, we shall see. All right, quick discussion with the chat. We take the XP. 5,000 crafting XP will be added to the account later on, and uh, that will give us 50 crafting. Very nice. Uh, it's pretty much between that and the potions, but I feel like we take the 5,000 crafting XP, and we are going to sell off these plate bodies and make ourselves some money, and that can be used to buy some runes. Alright, now that we've sold all those steel plate bodies, I am going to go ahead and do another task. Uh, we need to bake a plain pizza within the wilderness, and the best place to do it is right here. Uh, we have the cooking level for this, so that should be nice. Oh my god, seriously? I'm not killing this one, I'm just going to drag him out. Uh, I'll be able to get all the stuff from here, so we'll get that quickly done, and we can take off another easy task. I'll be able to fly through the easy task, but once the, hard, uh, the medium and the hard ones start coming in, it's going to get quite problematic. Uh, given that I'm going to be risking stuff. Kind of annoying. I'd rather not. But, I mean, I guess I could do this all in one take. We'll do tomato, cheese, and we should be able to cook it on the range right here. And that is a burnt pizza. <sighs> Let me get some more supplies. Right, attempt number two. That's going to be a plain pizza. Can we cook it? There we go. A plain pizza has been made. That is another task complete in the wilderness region. Okay, so the rewards for this task are 5,000 XP, a Mithril Scimitar, or Mithril Boots. Um, probably going to instantly say no to the Mithril Scimitar. We've got a room one. We're way past that point now. Uh, I probably will check between the XP and the boots. I don't really need the boots. They're not bad. But, like, again, I'm going to be maging. It's just not practical right now. 
I, I don't know. We'll see what the XP is. Maybe. All right, what XP do we get from this task? That's a pretty good one. Yeah, see, now I'm stuck between the Prayer XP and the Mithril Boots. And the reason I'm kind of stuck on the Mithril Boots is because there's a good chance we're going to get a carryover this episode. Uh, which means I'll be able to keep them. I, it's only 5,000 Prayer XP. Which I don't think gives me a level. Oh, it does, but I'm so close I could get it without it. Uh, I don't know. Kind of torn. Alright. Chat has voted, and uh, we're probably going to go with the boots, actually, because the prayer XP is nice, but it's only 5,000, and we are 57 prayer. It would give us to uh, 58, but honestly, I could do this fairly easily anyway, and uh, I don't know how I'd get the myth boots anytime soon. And like I said, we may get a carryover pretty soon, so we could carry that over along with the rune scimitar, and we'd have ourselves a bit of a measly, mealy setup, but um, it is something to go off. We will be able to use that for the future. So we're probably going to go with the Myth Boots, and I will be transferring them over fairly shortly. But for now, I think what I might do is uh, make a few more pizzas so I've got some food for the wilderness, and uh, we can get cracking with some runes. So to complete the final easy task in the wildy area, I need to use a Big Bone on the Chaos Altar. So I've got to head over to this uh, graveyard or whatever it's called over here, uh, grab myself a set of Big Bones. Uh, still on a free-to-play world, by the way. Um, we have transferred over the Mithril boots, but obviously it says members right now because free to play world and all that. Uh, I will have to switch back to use them, but I'm going to quickly go up to the Chaos Order, we'll use them, and then that will be all three uh, easy tasks in the Wilderness done. We'll be able to move on to the Mediums. I don't know if I really want to work on them, though. I think the first thing I want to actually do after I've done the tasks is go up to Mage Arena and try and get myself a mage cape. Now the big advantage of doing this is that once I've done Major Reader 1, I can claim the cape whenever I want, and uh, I'll have a very decent cape to use against the Archaeologist. Uh, it's going to cost me a little bit of investment into runes in the first place, but I think it's uh, definitely worth it for the future. All right, so I instantly hopped out of the world, but we did go ahead and use the uh, the bone on the auto, as you can see from up there. Again, the prayer XP. I just hopped instantly, kind of didn't really think about it, but that is going to be the third and final task completed in the wilderness area for the easy tasks. Okay, so the final rewards are 5,000 XP, 200 fe feathers, or 5 energy potions. I don't need the feathers. Energy potions are probably actually kind of useful, to be honest. As for the 5,000 XP, it really depends on what it is. But like I said, energy potions pretty useful here. Um, I'll spin the wheel and see. But like I said, kind of want the potions, really. All right, let's go ahead and spin the wheel again. What do we get for XP? Hmm... See, that XP is good. It doesn't get me a level, though. It's going to do nothing for me this ex this episode. 5,000 uh, Herbal XP, it's really not going to do a great deal. I feel like the 5 Energy Potions are way better here. But uh, we shall see. Alright, so we're going to take the Herbal XP. I kind of wanted to take the uh, Energy Potions, but I guess future-wise, Herbal XP is going to be better. It doesn't do anything for us at all this episode, unfortunately. Because there's no way I'm going to finish off that level. But 5,000 uh, Hardware XP will be added after the uh, 6 hour mock. So we'll have that added. Uh, I've gone back to the free to play world like I said. So I'm going to get as close as I can to Mage Bank. Before hopping back to a pay to play world. And then I'll be going up there and getting myself some runes. I'm going to be doing as much of this as I can on free to play. Just to minimize the risk of getting PK'd. It might seem like paranoia. But the inconvenience of dying to a PK is actually kind of massive. Especially because if I die to a PK, I actually lose the Mithril Boots. Something that I got from a task and that I wouldn't be able to get any other way right now. And this is the exact reason why I kind of don't like the idea of having a PvP aspect. Because if I die to a monster, I can find a way of getting myself back. Okay, Mage Bank. We have made it here. So, the current plan is to buy some runes from this guy. I don't know how much they cost. Okay, they are default price. 
I'm probably going to buy some Earth Strike runes uh, to complete the, uh, the Collodian's Challenge. And then I believe I may invest into Death Runes to do like Earth Blast. Uh, sorry, Wind Blast. I'd really like to be able to do Earth Blast, but I need two more magic levels for that. I don't really think I'm going to get it from uh, completing Collodian's Challenge. So, like I said, the plan is... We uh, collect ourselves some runes, hopefully blast our way through this, or I guess strike our way through this. Get ourselves the Mage Cape, which should help a lot with killing the uh, Archaeologist. And then maybe we can uh, sneak our way a kill through with that, unlock a new carryover, and then probably finish up with the Wilderness for now. Uh, I'm not very comfortable here, and I also don't really want to waste my time trying to get things that aren't going to be reasonable to get done. Like trying to kill the higher level bosses, which I believe will either take me ages, or I will just fail and I'd have wasted my time. All right, we've got ourselves 400 casts of Earth Strike. I hope this is enough. Let's go ahead and try and get ourselves a Mage Cape. I'm going to go through all of this. Do I need 60 magic for this? Yes. I just realized I need 60 magic. Why am I getting suggested to do this? It's my own fault for not suggesting, uh, saying something about it. But the chat were telling me to get a mage cape with 51 magic, and it's just occurred to me now why they're... <sighs> no, it's my own fault. It's my own fault. I'm an idiot. So now we've got 400 casts of Earth Strike and nothing to do with it. Great! Right, now that that palaver's over, we've got ourselves 400 casts that I can't use. I feel like such an idiot. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and buy ourselves some death runes, and uh, we'll use these to kill the archaeologist. Right, change of plans. We've gone with Bolt Spells uh, for two reasons. First of all, I can use Earth Bolt because I've got the Staff. I cannot use Earth Blast. Uh, that is at 53. I think I mentioned that already. Secondly, I can have way more casts if I take Bolt. Uh, twice as many, to be precise. And uh, I already have the Air Runes, so that's convenient for this. Um, I will be going and selling off this when I remember. I completely forgot to do it before. I don't know if the Boots give negative magic. Oh, they do. Okay, so I'll be keeping them off. Um, I don't know how well this kill's going to go. 200 casts. Um, I'm going to run out of prayer repeatedly, so I'm going to have to be running to the altar and stuff. I might try prayer flicking. I don't know. Um, I'm just going to try and wing this and hopefully get the kill. This, uh, this might go really bad, but I'm going to try and make my way down to the archaeologist and we'll give this a try. Like I said, I don't know if I want to invest too much time in the wilderness. I don't really like being here, so I'm probably just going to take little snippets at it as and when I get it available to me. And um, it'll basically be whenever I feel like doing stuff here, that's what I'll do. Uh, I also have Gnome. I don't know if I mentioned this already in the video. Uh, I do want to get a lot done in Gnome. It's an area that we've not had yet. A bunch of tasks that we can do, so I don't want to spend the entire time in Wilderness. Not to mention Southern Corrinders available, and we did get our level up to the point where I'm pretty much able to do Tithe now. So I'll be able to train farming, so I kind of want to just finish up with the Wilderness, get the stuff done that I know I can do right now, and not invest too much time into things that are a bit overly ambitious. Alright, here goes nothing. This could be fairly interesting. Finish it. And there we go. That is the kill done. We got a red dehyde body. Oh, that's a tempting one to keep over the boots. Oh, man. Right. Well, I'm going to get out of here before I end up getting PK'd. But we did manage to get the uh, crazy archaeologist kill done. I'm actually going to switch over to a free-to-play world just because I'm paranoid as anything. But that is a boss kill uh, in the wilderness. Crazy Archaeologist is done. That gives us another reward whether we want to pick an extra region or a carryover. And I'm going to just take the carryover because I don't believe I need more than three regions, at least for a very long time. They tend to cover me for pretty much everything I want. So we're going to have an extra carryover. That gives us three carryovers per week. Uh, we already had the uh, D-Med and Rune Semi that we were currently carrying over. But now I'm torn between keeping the red Dehyde body and the Mithril boots. All right, well, I've been egged on to do another kill. So, we are going to attempt another archaeologist kill. With the runes we've got, it only used 66 uh, uh, casts, so that was pretty good. Uh, I hit quite often. But like I said, I've been encouraged to do another kill. Let's hope that the red dehyde body keeps on death, and then I won't have to worry about that. I will quickly check before we go ahead. It does, so if we do end up dying, then I guess it's just a no-brainer to take the boots, as they will be lost. 
Uh, I honestly think this is a better drop anyway, or a better item to carry over anyway. I wasn't expecting to get something useful on the first kill. But red DI body, pretty nice. Uh, we're really hoping we can get rune crossbows because then that will just be the thing that I take over. Um, then it'll be like three different times where I've changed what I'm carrying over. But you know what? I can't complain about good RNG. Right. Well, unfortunately, I attempted another kill. And um, it seems someone finished the kill while I was going to get my prayer back. So the second kill did not happen. But we did get ourselves a red dehyde body from the first one which is probably what I'm going to be carrying over over the Mithril Boots. Uh, ranged is a quite high stat for me, and yes, I can't use it yet, but I'm one level off. I don't really care. It'll be very shortly that I'll be able to use that. So we'll have ourselves a Red DI Body, a Demet, and a Rune Sim. They're probably likely going to be the items that I keep um, to the next week. But for now, I believe I am done with the Wilderness. I don't know if there's anything else I wanted to do. There's a task to smith an iron plate body. I guess I could go ahead and do that. I can get iron bars pretty easily. Um, as for the others, to complete a lap of the agility course and to chop a U-log. The U-log I can't actually do. I don't have the woodcut level 4. And I don't... I think this is the exact level actually to do the wieldy course now that I think about it. It is, yes. But I don't really feel like doing it right now. So I'll go ahead and make the iron plate body. But other than that, I think I'm going to work on some other stuff in Gnome. Uh, because I'm bound to get wilderness again in the future. Uh, in a time where I don't think I'm ready for anything else. And I'll probably go ahead and do those other tasks then. But, as I said, I'm going to go ahead and make myself an Iron Plate body right now. Which I believe I can actually just do in free-to-play. So, I mean, there's no rule in this series that says I can't do things on free-to-play. So, why not get it done in free-to-play where I'm pretty sure no one's ever going to attack me. This is such a dumb system. So I cannot use the coffer before talking to Lisa. But to talk to Lisa, I have to go to an LMS world. So to unlock the coffer, it forces me to go to an LMS world. Why? Just let me learn about the game on whatever world I want. Why do I have to hop and find a an LMS world that I really don't care about doing? Just so I can use this little coffer right here. I was just going to store the cash that I have. But, you know, the game's mean... It's going to make me go to LMS. I'm not actually playing it. I am never going to play LMS. I hate the minigame. I hate PvP in general. Alright, I guess we take these five iron bars and we go ahead and make ourselves an iron plate body right there. There we go. And that is going to be a medium task in the wilderness completed. So, from this task, the rewards are 50,000 XP, a rune pickaxe, or two super attack and strength potions. As always, I'm going to be spinning the wheel to see what XP it is. Um, I don't really... I mean, the rune pickaxe kind of feels a bit pointless. I have Southern Karend and Gnome. I don't really want to do mining. It's a good item. If I had a spare carryover, for sure I'd keep it, but I don't think it's all that useful right now. But let's go ahead and see what XP we get. And uh, we can make a decision based on that, so spin the wheel. Mm, I guess it could be worse. Hmm. Definitely would have appreciated something like Herbal here, but 50,000 Fletch in XP could be useful. Let's find out. All right, so for the reward for this, we are going to take the Fletching XP. Uh, I've been saying with the chat that I really want to get the Fletching level up to the point where I can make magic shortbows. I know it's a bit of a stretch, that's level 80, but if we do get to that point, then we basically have access to a magic shortbow most places that we go to. Um, to be fair, if I can access Pure Pure, I've just realized I can actually get all of the requirements for it because Nature Implings drop uh, magic logs. Uh, I believe it's Young Implings or maybe Baby Implings drop knives. And then you can also get bowstring from young implings as well. And that will allow me to make a magic short bow pretty much anywhere that there is a crop circle, which is a lot of places. Not to mention, I have three regions every week. So there's a good chance at least one of them will have a crop circle. So if I can get 80 fletching at some point, uh, it will be really nice to have access to that wherever I am. And I won't need to waste a carryover slot on it because I know that the next week I could probably just make it again. So that's actually really handy. Um, yeah, that's the reason I want to go for the fletch next P. It's uh, actually way more useful than having fire making or even cooking, to be honest. I don't really need cooking XP all that much. But anyway, that's probably going to be the last of the tasks that I do. Um, I cannot do the job of U-Log, and I don't really feel like doing the Wilderness course right now. 
So, we're probably finished up with the wilderness for now. I believe, I think, I might go to Gnome next. Um, I'm going to bash out the tasks in Gnome. And then once I've done everything that I can think of doing in the Gnome area, I'm probably going to head over to Southern Corrent. And we're going to work on doing some Tithe and getting our farming up finally. Because um, it's been going slowly up over the weeks. But now that I can access Tithe Farm, uh, I reckon we can get quite a lot of XP. So... Let's uh, head out of here, and we'll get ourselves to the gnome area. All right, we've made our way over to gnome. Uh, we're just going to quickly go ahead and help Femi, so that we don't have to worry about this later. Uh, I believe, according to the map, that the gnome region is everything basically beyond this point here. Um, so everything over here, that includes up by Piscatorius, the hunting area, and all of that, is considered the gnome area. Uh, I didn't feel like there was enough content up in Piscatorius to make it its own region, and naturally I require swan song to even get in here, so... That's uh, very limited. I guess there's some hunting stuff. I could do falconry and whatnot, but I don't know how desperately I need hunter XP right now. Um, I just helped out Femi to help with quests in the future. Now, I don't think that there's any quests I can actually do, because I think most of it requires, like, Ardy and Feldips as well. So I'm probably not going to look into doing quests, but we've got uh, the easy tasks that I can complete all of them. And then the medium tasks I can complete... One, maybe two. Uh, grow an apple tree is one of them. I don't know what level that is. Um, fruit tree... It's 27. I'd have to get myself an apple seed. And then, of course, this task is to grow an apple tree, not plant it. Um, some of the tasks are plant, some of them are grow. Uh, the difference is, for it to grow, it has to be fully grown without dying. Whereas planting, it doesn't matter if it dies, as long as I planted it in the first place. Anyway, the first task that we are going to try and get done here is to complete the agility course, which is over here. Nice, easy task. Again, we are, this is the first time we've ever had the gnome region, uh, and it is week 19, so I do apologize that these seem like really, really basic tasks to do, and quite honestly, they are. I was kind of hoping that the uh, the random randomizer wheel would be a little bit more distributional, you know, so that we'd get the same, well, equal amount of each region. But it didn't seem to turn out that way. We had plenty of Karamja and none of the gnome. But anyway, let's go ahead and climb over this net and through the pipe. And that is going to complete us an easy task within the gnome region. There we go. All right. So the rewards for this task are 5,000 XP, 200 Thevers, and Mithril Boots. I've already got a pair of Mithril Boots that we're not going to be keeping anyway because of the red dehyde body and uh, the 200 feathers are kind of useless all things considered um i have access to chickens i'm pretty sure some are grand yeah i do have access to chickens so even if i wanted feathers i could do that uh we'll spin the wheel for the xp but i don't really feel there's much reason in taking the other either of the other two as i've just stated so let's go ahead and spin ourselves the xp wheel and see what we get 5,000 XP in cooking. I mean, all things considered, it's better than the next one that it could have hit, which is fire making. I don't really want fire making XP ever again. I don't need it. I'm 62. It literally unlocks probably maybe a few tasks, like burning a magic log or something. I don't know what tasks I have. But apart from that, fire making XP would be useless. Cooking XP can be useful. It's not all that massive. It's probably the second most useless skill. But as the other two rewards are going to be completely redundant to me right now, I'm going to be taking the 5,000 cooking XP. All right, so the next task I want to do is actually score a goal in Gnome Ball. Now, I'm not quite sure how I'm supposed to do this. Do I just, like, steal it off someone? I cannot remember how to get the Gnome Ball. Take it from this guy? Oh, I just told him it looks too dangerous to play Gnome Ball. That's not quite what I meant to say. All right, there we go. We've got the gnome ball. It's time to score ourselves a goal. Let's not get tackled. And we missed. Let's try again. And there we go. That is a goal scored. Gnome ball is completed. That's going to be an easy task in the gnome area. Okay, so the rewards for this task are 5,000 XP, a Mithril Square Shield, or 10 Cosmic Runes. 
Another case where it's kind of redundant to take the items. The Mithril Square isn't going to do me any favours. It's a bit, a bit more defence bonus if I want to do melee, maybe. I guess it has some uses, uh, but the 10 Cosmic Runes are fairly useless. I'm not going to enchant anything. I don't need them. Um, but I will go ahead and spin the wheel again. We'll get this done real quick. And we'll see what XP we get from this. Okay, 5,000 crafting. I think I'm going to take that over the um, the Mithra Square Shield. Uh, had it been fire making or cooking, I might have chosen the square, uh, the square Shield, but I think the crafting XP is probably worth taking. So, that's another 5k crafting XP going to be added. Let's go. Alright, so the next and last easy task of the gnome area is going to be enter a crop circle uh, to Puro Puro. Uh, so we're going to be hopping through worlds until this uh, wheat field here has a crop circle in it, and that will allow us to complete the task. And that shouldn't take too long. Maybe we can get on this world. That could be good for the video. If it ever loads, can we get into the game? That'd be great. This is awkward. Oh my god, why does it take so long to hop? Come on, game! This is going to be a complete waste of time because there's not going to be a crop circle there. And this is going to be stupid. I'll go back to you when i got the crop circle. Finally, we got a crop circle. Let's go ahead and complete the final easy task at the gnome area. And there we go. Task complete. Okay, so the rewards for this task are going to be 5,000 XP, 100 Mines and Airs, or a Mithril Pickaxe. Now, I've already got a chunk of runes. I can get more runes if I really want to. I'm not all that fussed about them, so I'm probably going to rule that one out. The Mithril Pickaxe is fairly useless. I had the option of a Rune Pickaxe earlier, so, you know... If I wanted a pickaxe, I would have taken that. But uh, it'll probably be the XP. Still, we'll go ahead and see what we get. And uh, I'll probably decide based on that. Let's go. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. I think we just take the 5,000 herb lore. Pretty simple, easy reward to take. Another task done. Right, for the only medium task that I'm probably going to be able to do, because I don't think I'm going to be able to get myself the apple seed. Maybe. Who said? Who knows? Um, but basically, I need to make a willow shortbow from scratch within the gnome area. So we're going to be picking flax from here. There's a spinning wheel just southeast. I believe I can turn it into a bowstring. And then I need to go southwest, I think, towards the terrorbird pen. There's a couple of willow trees there. I can chop them down, make a willow shortbow from that, and that will be the medium task complete. I'm trying to remember where the spinning wheel is. I believe it's over here somewhere in one of these houses. Uh, there it is on the mini-map. So I do not want to chop the oak. Uh, I got myself an axe from the shop in the Grand Tree, the one that sells these swords. Apparently they sell uh, axes as well. Convenience. Make the bowstring. I'm going to go get myself a willow log, and we'll finish off this task. That's going to be our willow log. Let's go ahead and fletch that into a short bow. Then attach ourselves the bowstring. And that's going to be a medium task done in the gnome area. Okay, so the rewards for this task are 50,000 XP, 1,000 iron arrows, or once again, a rune pickaxe. Let's rule out the rune pickaxe. And I'm also questioning why there's a item in the middle of the water. Sorry, I'm really intrigued. There's a swamp toad in the middle of the water. I didn't know that was a thing. Anyway, getting distracted. Okay, 50,000 XP, 1,000 iron arrows, or a rune pickaxe. Gonna rule out the rune pickaxe instantly. Iron arrows are fairly useless as well, actually, because I can get them pretty easily. Uh, so we're probably looking at the uh, 50,000 XP on this one. Let's go ahead and check what we get for the XP, though. Maybe it lands on a fire bacon, and I feel like something else is more useful. Spin the wheel. Oh my god, that was so close to land on fire making. I was like, oh my, just, okay, I'm so glad that that ticked over. I did not want 50,000 fire making XP, but 50,000 Herblore XP is amazing. There's no way I'm taking anything over that. Herblore is so good to be able to get these XP rewards on. So I will be adding the 50,000 Herblore XP as well. Getting all these tasks done, getting all this XP is going to really help progress this account, especially with the red DI body. We are making a lot of progress today.
All right, with all those tasks complete, I'm going to be heading over to Southern Korean. There's not much more I wanted from Gnome, but I did want to smash out these early tasks before they became completely redundant. We're going to go over to Southern Korean. As I've said many times, I am allowed to go in Forbidden Areas to transfer myself over to the regions that I do have, and we do have Southern Korean this week. So I'm going to be heading over there. We're probably going to be doing some uh, little bit of wood cutting and just like chopping up the logs and stuff, selling them to the general store so I can make a little bit of money. I want to get myself uh, some... Um, arrows, so I'm probably going to be going over to Daryl in Shazy, and once I've got some money, we'll buy ourselves some arrows. And then I think I'm going to kill sand crabs to get 60 range, which will allow us to use the red de-eyed body. And in the meantime, I'm going to be doing a little bit of farming, and then we'll probably get ourselves some garden pies, try out some tithe, and uh, finally start boosting up this level. And the interesting thing about this is that when we finally can enter Tithe, we'll be able to unlock the teleport as well, which is going to be really nice, because I won't have to do things like this anymore. Right, we've got ourselves some money uh, that I got from making Willow Longbows unstrung. Uh, I was just really tired last time I was doing this, so I don't, didn't want to do anything too demanding. But we've got ourselves 6.1k. I'm just going to be spending this on bronze arrows. Uh, we've also still got the Willow Shortbow we made from before, so I'll probably just use that to train range for now. I believe it's the best bow I can make, although I do want to just actually quickly mention before I go on. I did add the XP, so we had a total of 10,000 crafting XP. 60,000 Herblore XP, 50,000 Fletching XP, and 5,000 Cooking XP added. And these are the stats that we're at now. I did get some Fletching levels, and an interesting thing with the Fletching levels is that we actually unlocked Emerald Bolts. Uh, I didn't realize that the level for Emerald Bolts is actually higher than the level for a Mithril Crossbow. So when I said before that we had access to a Mithril Crossbow and we'd be able to use uh, the Poison Emerald Bolts, I was actually wrong. I wouldn't have been able to make the Bolts anyway, but thankfully that never became a problem because uh, I didn't need them until after I got the level anyway. Also, in the uh, previous stream that we did, uh, we discussed about the Agility course in the Wilderness. Now, the reason I didn't do it initially was because I was really tired. I really couldn't be bothered to do it right now and I didn't feel like it. But... In hindsight, it's actually quite a strategical thing to not do it right now, as one of the rewards for that task is, I believe, five prayer potions, which could be really useful when I actually need them in the future. So, by postponing the task, I can postpone the reward, and yeah, consequentially, I will be able to have prayer potions in the future if I really want them. Obviously, I'll spin the XP anyway, but, you know, it could land on something that's not all that useful, and we could use the prayer potions for maybe getting some boss kills in the wilderness without having to outsource to get our own prayer potions from elsewhere. Alright, we've got ourselves a thousand bronze arrows, willow shortbow, unfortunately I cannot equip this yet, and that is the entire reason why I'm training range to 60. As we can see here, I need 60 ranged, so we are going to go and train on sand crabs for a little while with the thousand uh, bronze arrows. Does this lower my range bonus? It does, okay, so we're just going to basically stand there with just a willow shortbow. It's kind of scuffed. But uh, once we get the 60 range, we'll be able to use the red dehyde body, and after that I do plan on doing some tithe. So what I think I'm going to do first is actually quickly do some thieving and put, plant some stuff so that while I'm training range it can be growing and that way once we're done with 60 range we will be all prepped and ready to go to train some farming. I do need some garden pies but they should be fairly easy to make. I have pretty much everything in this area I believe. We've got onions here. I can't remember exactly what I need um, but I can also grow the stuff as well and there is a pie dish spawn just in this church if you go upstairs the pie dish spawn right there so that's nice and easy to do them as well so that should be fairly simple to get ourselves the garden pie and that will allow us to do some tithe that is going to be 31 farming which now means wow we also grow strawberries but with a garden pie boost we'll be able to do tithe got to be planting the rest of these anyway just for the later xp and some more tomatoes if i need them for the garden pies but for now we do have quite a few and uh, once I finish farming here, we'll be heading back down, well, we'll be heading down to Sand Crabs, training ourselves some range, getting like 60 range, which is a massive unlock, uh, equipping ourselves the red DI body, and then we'll probably work on some tithe. Thankfully, uh, tomatoes are the only things that are really any way difficult to get around here, because uh, the other two ingredients, cabbages and onions, are readily available in these fields. So that's kind of neat, and I believe there's a crop circle. And there we go. That is going to be 60 ranged. We can now equip ourselves this red dehyde body. And that is actually massive for this account. Uh, because we now actually have a decent setup for ranged. Uh, getting range equipment is fairly easy in most areas. You know, getting a bow is, is pretty much uh, sorted with the uh, use of um, implinks. Like this one here. Which gives me, uh, I think that's a curry leaf. 
Why are you still following me? Anyway, yeah, so, implings allow me to pretty much make a bow basically anywhere. Um, and arrows are fairly, uh, obtainable from pretty much any area. So, range is fairly sorted now. Unfortunately, we're going to end up losing these boots because we were going to carry them over. We did not expect to get the red dehyde body on the first kill. Got really lucky on that one. But the next step now is to drop these items that are completely useless. And then we're going to go ahead and get ourselves some garden pies. Probably like half an invent or so of them. Uh, I'm going to need to buy some watering cans and stuff and prep for Tithe. And then we get to do everyone's favorite minigame. And train some farming. Honestly, just getting this farming level up is going to be uh, super huge for the account. So I'm happy to do some Tithe just to get it done. I think we're probably going to go for about 45 farming give or take. I don't think I'll go any further than that. It's a good point to stop out and I can always do more Tithe in the future if we end up here. I think I can grow most of the useful stuff at that point, so that's the plan. I'm just doing this to get some extra money, but apart from that, let's go make some garden pies. Alright, that's going to be well, 10? Yeah, we made 10 garden pies. We burnt 2. I was going to make 12. Not a major deal. 10 garden pies, obviously 2 bites each, so that is 20 boosts of farming uh, I don't know how many I'm actually going to need. Uh, as I've said, I'm going to get XP while doing this. I'm going to gain levels. And once I hit 34, I won't even need the pies anyway. Uh, in the meantime, I did go ahead and use up the Chaos Runes and Air Runes. Because I just had them left over from before. And I thought I might as well cast some spells, get some magic XP. Didn't gain any levels or anything though. But, with all that said, we are ready to go to Tithe. I'm going to need to quickly grab some watering cans before we do. Uh, because I do not have Agricola's. And uh, we'll have, be having to do it the old-fashioned way. So I'm going to buy a chunk of these and fill them up with water. I just realized I can't store them in the lap corner. You can only store one at a time, can't you? I'll figure this out, and we'll head over to Tithe. All right, everyone's favorite minigame, Tithe. Uh, I did realize one thing when I started, um, is that I've now unlocked the minigame teleport to Tithe, which is actually really nice, because prior to this, getting back to, uh, well, to here, to, to Southern Karend, when I have it as a region, is actually really inconvenient. I'd have to like home teleport, run all the way over to Port Sarim, and then take the boat with Veos. And that just took ages, so I'm uh, really glad that we've now unlocked this teleport. And I'm going to try and get this done without letting anything die. Uh, I have a tendency to mess up sometimes though, so we'll have to just see how it goes. But we should be able to get 34, probably on like our first run actually, because you do get a large chunk of XP from this. So here's hoping. Alright, this is going to be the end of the first run of Tithe Farm. And it should be a perfect run. Let's go ahead and farm that last one. There we go. We've got 100. How much farming XP do we get from this? Can we jump all the way to 34? Because that would be amazing. Let's hand this in. We get 35. Perfect. And there we go. We just jumped four entire farming levels. We can now grow teak trees. Uh, let's face it. Not useful. I can't go to Fossil Island for a very long time. Regardless, though. That is a good chunk of levels. We don't need the garden pies anymore. I had an extra few anyway if I did need them. But that's nice because we can now do Tithe without garden pies. Uh, the biggest hindrance for this is actually the energy. It took quite a while to do that run. Um, because I run out of energy so much. And the stuff weighing me down. I don't really have the opportunity to get rid of anything that's causing a lot of weight. I don't really know what I want to do about this. I may actually look into doing the fertilizer... Uh, 10 method where you do like 10 but twice as fast i'm, I'm pretty sure it's slower than doing the other method but it would re uh, involve less energy usage i think so i might look into doing that i'm not entirely sure yet but i do want to train some more farming i'm almost level 36 as well nice uh like i said we're probably going to try and go for 45 and then i think i'll finish off with farming we still got three hours and 43 minutes left so we've got plenty of time for this Probably going to get some more watering cans now, though, considering I don't have the garden pies anymore, and I won't have to refill as often. I do eventually want to buy the Gricodas can, because obviously you can store that. That's 200 points, though, and we've only got 26 so far. Probably not going to be done this episode. Uh, probably won't be done for a very long time, but it will be the first thing I buy from Tithe. Um, the second will probably be the seed box, and I'll be using that as a carryover. Which, by the way, for the video, if I haven't mentioned this in the video before, which I'm pretty sure I have, uh, the only item that does not count as a carryover in a single slot is a looting bag. So a seed box will count as a single slot, which includes any seeds that are inside it. Same as with a herb sack, anything that's inside it gets carried over with the one inventory slot. That is how that works. Uh, again, the looting bag is the only reason or the only thing that doesn't allow me to do that, and that's just because it would be completely broken, and I don't like the idea of using a looting bag 
between episodes, uh, I could carry over way too much. But with everything else, I think it's a bit more of a strategy. And uh, I guess also the looting bag is really easy to obtain. So anyway, I'm going to get myself a whole bunch more watering cans and we're going to try and do some more tithe. I'm going to be walking as much as I can just so I've got the energy to actually do the mini game. And I may give the uh, the 10 with the fertilizer and uh, a few goes, see how that goes. Uh, but if it doesn't work out, I'll probably go back to the 20 once again. And let's get ourselves some farming XP. Right, that is going to be another inventory done. We did try out the 10 method with the fertilizer. It didn't work out all too well, so I went back to the tried and true. But we're going to hand this in and get ourselves some more levels. We also got 36 while doing it. As I said, I was very close anyway. So let's hand this in, and that's going to be 39 farming. I mean, we do get a lot of XP for this, so it is very convenient. As much as I hate doing Tithe, this is the best method we have available to us. So I'm going to have to continue to do it. Um, I've got a short period of time before I end this stream today, so I'm probably going to try and do one quick run, uh, 20 of them, before I end off, and then we'll be doing some more. Naturally, for the video, that means nothing. Um, but like I said, we're still working our way towards 45, so probably two more entire trips of Tithe. And then I think we'll be done. Maybe, maybe a third. I don't know. All right, another inventory done. This is probably going to push us to about 41, 42. Can we hope for 42? 41, unfortunate, not quite 42. So I'm going to need to do two more entire runs to get 45, unfortunately, because this next one is not going to do it. And uh, also, unfortunately, I still won't be able to get the Grakoda's can. It will be the first thing I buy because honestly, doing Tithe without it is horrible. I have to fill up these every two runs every two like planting sessions um, and it just takes ages I mean I can speed it up by doing this but I'm lazy and I don't want to so anyway we're gonna go back and do some more I'm probably not gonna record any more of this until I finish so you won't see the next run but you should see the run after that right that should just about do it we are completely out of energy and I just want to say doing this about energy absolutely sucks uh, it takes so long I've been here for like an hour and 20 minutes just to do a few runs but this should get us 45 Hopefully, please. There we go. 45 farming. That is going to uh, unlock maple trees and the farming guild, which is the most important part about this. Because now, if we have Kebos in the future, we will be able to access the farming guild. Only the low tier, like the allotment patch and that, but it still might be useful. I am going to be stopping there, though, because I really don't feel like doing any more of this. Um... I think what I'm going to be doing is investing a bunch of my time into training defense now. Uh, we do want to still train and try and get up to the DMED, and we have access to sand crab, so it feels a bit of a waste to do anything else. Uh, I could go back to the wildy and do some stuff there, but I, I really think the investment into stats is worth it at this point. I do want more combat levels. Defense is really good for that as well. I want more combat levels so that I can take Slayer tasks from higher masters, and that will allow me to do more Slayer, and just to essentially uh, boost this account up a lot more. Not to mention, there are a chunk of Slayer bosses that I need to kill in this series as well, so Slayer is going to be very important. So anything that can contribute to training Slayer, I am willing to do. And like I said, i got Sand Crabs, we'll get rid of these watering cans, get ourselves some cakes, and probably just spend the next hour and a half killing Sand Crabs, getting ourselves Defense XP, and I don't really think there's anything else I want to do. Um, I am going to say... At the end of this episode, uh, I am going to be heading over to LMS and just shoving the coins in the coffer. Uh, they're going to get wiped anyway, so I might as well put them in there just in case I get wood in the future. And then I've got some coins to start off with. And uh, at the moment, I'm going to go get myself some cakes just in case I can take a little bit of damage. I shouldn't really, but just in case. And like I said, I'll store these in LMS. And um, that's pretty much it. I'll probably see you guys at the end of the episode once we've done some melee training. See how high we can get our defense. Hopefully in the 50s. Get close to that D-Mad. And that's going to be 52 defense, the last level we are going to get in this episode. We've got ourselves four minutes left at the, probably about the one minute mark. I'm going to head over to LMS and store the coins. But until then, going to try and sneak in a little bit more XP. Get ourselves a few, well, a bit closer to uh, 53. We're at 63 combat. Pretty nice progress. I would like to get it a bit higher so we can use some more Slayer Masters. But uh, all we can do is grind. Finishing off this episode, smacking some rats for some extra XP. We got three seconds, two seconds, one second, and that is episode over. So, uh, we stored as much as we could into the coffers. You can only store factors of 1,000, so couldn't actually store all of the GP. Everything else is going to be wiped except for our three carryovers, which I am going to select right now. 
Uh, we are going to be carrying over the Dragon Medium Helm, the Rune Scimitar, and the Red Dehyde Body, which does mean that we have wasted the boots. It's unfortunate. I didn't expect to get a good drop from the Archaeologist, I've got to be honest. The boots were... Ah, they were meant to be carried over instead, but... What are you going to do, hey? Maybe I should have killed the Archaeologist first. Hindsight is 2020, but that is going to be everything we take over for the next episode. Everything else will be wiped. But you know what that means? It is time to spin the wheel and get ourselves three new regions. I don't even really know what I'm supposed to do with these regions. There's not really... There's quite a lack of content. I mean, I'm going to have to do a little bit of research into it. But I can't think of anything instantly that I would actually utilize these regions for. But anyway, we will move on to week 20. Let's go.